chapter 4, amen, verse 6. And we welcome those that may be watching live or may watch this archive later by internet or mobile device or through Roku channel or through whatever means. We welcome you tonight. Amen. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6. It's page 1607 on your expositor study Bible. And when you have it, you can either stand or just say amen so I know everybody is ready. Amen. Don't ever just take the preacher's word for it. Amen. Open up the Bible and read it for yourself. Amen. Because if the preacher's wrong and you believe it, you're going to be just as guilty. Amen. At the judgment seat. Amen. So always follow along with the scripture. Amen. And if, you, and if I go too fast, write it down and go home and study it later. Amen. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6. Just one verse. It says, Then he answered and spoke unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. And tonight I'm just going to be uh, more teaching rather than preaching on the reason why we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Why we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Like we see in the book of Acts. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. And Father, I just ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, that your spirit have his way, Lord. Let the real teacher and preacher come forth, Lord. And Lord, just let me be a yield vessel, Lord, to proclaim your words, Lord. Take it to your people, Lord. Anoint the words, Lord, and let it edify the body, Lord. And let me do your word no harm, Lord. And those who need filled and who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness, Lord, I ask tonight, whether here or on camera, Lord, by, by the time this service is done, Lord, that you fill them with the Holy Ghost. And we'll give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen and amen. You may be seated. We here in Zechariah, see in the book of Zechariah, when it comes to the work of the Lord, it's not by human might or human power, but everything that's done for the work of the Lord is by His Spirit. The hardest thing for believers to do is get self out of the way and let the Holy Ghost just take over and do what He does best. Amen. Convicting sinners. Amen. Edifying the believers. Building up their faith. Amen. Dealing with sin. Amen. Sanctifying us. Making us into the image of Christ. Amen. That's the hardest thing for us to do as believers, to get out of the way. Amen. Because us as human beings, we want to do something. Amen. We always want to have our hand in the cookie jar. Amen. And we see here in this scripture, amen, that the only way any work of the Lord gets done is by His Spirit. Amen. It's not by might. It's not by our human might, nor by our power, human power, but it's by His Holy Spirit. Amen. In other words, if we're not allowing the Holy Spirit to flow and anoint, amen, when we minister or talk to people, amen, or whether it be a service or whatever we're doing, amen, we're walking after the flesh then. Many Christians have the concept of walking after the flesh as watching TV or watching radio or uh, doing worldly things. That's not what walking after the flesh is. Walking after the flesh is trying to use your own strengths, abilities, talents, education, the things you know to try to get the work of God done. Amen. And when we do that, what we're doing is we're walking after the flesh. And when we walk after the flesh in the book of Galatians, we see what manifests. Amen. Murders, envies, adultery, fornication. Amen. Because let's just admit, sin is more powerful than you or me. Amen. Satan is more powerful than you or me. Amen. And if we're not operating by faith and grace and allowing the Holy Spirit to do the work, 
Amen. And we're trying to do it ourselves. What we're doing is walking after the flesh, being carnally minded. And what happens is Satan takes advantage of that. And he's a stronger man than you or me. Amen. And he overrides us and then things go wrong. Amen. It gets screwed up. And so it's better for us to just get out of the way and let the Holy Ghost do what he does best. Amen. And that's the first reason why we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's for service. To get the job done. Amen. So to speak. Well, Brother Brad, I thought when I got born again, I was ready to do the work of God. No, no. When you got born again, when you gave your heart and life to Christ, that got you ready for heaven. That washed you in the blood of the Lamb and washed you clean, amen, so that you could go before the Father, amen, when we pass away and be ready for heaven, be many, ready to meet the Lord, amen, because when He looks at you, He'll see the blood, amen, and He'll pass judgment over you, amen. So the born-again experience, just what I ministered this morning, does not get you ready to live this life on earth, but that got you ready for heaven. Amen. So when you pass away from this life, amen, your spirit and soul go on to be with the Lord because you've been born again. It got you ready for heaven. Amen. The baptism of the Holy Spirit, like we see in the book of Acts, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, what that does is gets us ready to live this life of faith. Amen. Here on earth. Amen. It gets us ready to be service for God. Amen. When you got born again, the Holy Spirit came into you. Amen. Abode in you and started the sanctification process and started dealing with the sin issues in your life. Amen. When you get filled with the Holy Spirit, the other part of the promise of the Father, amen, that I mentioned this morning, is to get you ready for service. Amen. For His work. Amen. It doesn't mean that if you get filled with the Holy Spirit, I'm not talking about services in the five-fold ministry, evangelist, uh, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, amen. But the, whatever ministry God calls you to, there are diversities of ministries, just not the five-fold ministry aspect of being a preacher, amen. There's the ministry of helps. There's the ministry of government, amen. There's the ministry of intercessory prayer. There's the ministry of worship, amen. Whatever God puts you, Amen. You need the infilling of the Holy Spirit, amen, in order to get that job done, to do that work that God's called you to do. Amen. Get you ready to live this life, amen. The baptism of the Holy Spirit isn't the, the end part, but it's the beginning part. It's the doorway, amen, for this life here on earth, amen, as we walk by faith. That's the whole reason... I should say one aspect and one important aspect of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, amen, to get God's work done, to get the job done, amen. And I want to show you this. Turn to Luke. Chapter 4. Amen. In verse 18. Luke chapter 4 verse 18. Now I'm going to explain. You can go home tonight and uh, read the chapter prior before this. But what has happened. I'm going to sum up really quickly. What has happened is. Um, Jesus he went to the Jordan River where uh, John the Baptist was. And he asked uh, John the Baptist to baptize him in water and John the Baptist uh, does baptizes Jesus in water and as Jesus comes up the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord came down from heaven descended upon him amen which was the infilling of the Holy Spirit upon the Lord amen and then it says straightway after he was full of the Holy Spirit you see that in chapter 4 1 and Jesus being full of the Holy Spirit amen went out into the wilderness where he was tempted of the devil for 40 days, and then after the temptation, he comes back into his hometown of Nazareth. Amen. And this is what he says. He says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Amen. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, 
and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them who are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. We see from this scriptures, amen, that the Messiah, amen, the Savior, amen, the Son of God, amen, as a man, he was 100% God and he was 100% man, amen. And as 100% man, he needed the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we see that when he got baptized in the Jordan River, the Spirit of the Lord descended upon him and he got filled with the Holy Spirit as a man. Amen. Now the first thing I have to say is, if Jesus needed the baptism of the Holy Spirit, how much more do you think you and I need it? Amen. Amen. That's the first point I want to get across. The second point was, he needed it for service. Amen. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach. Amen. We need the baptism of the Holy Spirit for preaching. Amen. To preach to the poor, and that's not talking about poor in money. Amen. But it's talking about those who are poor in spirit. Amen. Those who have a broken and contrite spirit and don't know what to do. Amen. And then all of a sudden, a spirit-filled believer, amen, gets behind the pulpit and starts ministering the word of God, amen. And all of a sudden, that anointing starts flowing as they hear those words and something just touches their heart and starts healing that broken heart. Amen. amen. That's why we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's for service. To preach the gospel. Amen. Amen. Heal broken hearts, amen. How many families are, are torn apart by divorce and everything uh, in ruin? But let me tell you, the presence and the power of God can heal it. Yes. Amen. Psychology can't do that. The ways of the world can't do that. Amen. Drowning it in alcohol is not going to make it go away. But I know one who has the Spirit of the Lord upon him. Amen. And because we're joint heirs with Christ, he'll give his uh, children that anointing as well to proclaim his word. And they'll sense that presence. Amen. And it'll heal that broken heart. It's to do the work of God for service. Amen. To preach to the poor. Heal broken hearts. Preach deliverance to the captives. Amen. Recovering sight to the blind. Amen. It's one thing when you hear a minister or somebody talk about Christ, but it's, a, it's another thing when you hear about, hear about it from someone who's spirit-filled. Amen. Who has the anointing and the power to back it up. Amen. All of a sudden, they start seeing spiritually. Things start making sense because the Holy Spirit, amen, is anointing those words and taking it to the heart of their soul, amen, and explaining things to them on a level that you or me could never do, amen. That's why we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Oh, it's so important. Unfortunately, the modern church is trying to use everything in the world and it won't work. Amen. They use fog machines, they use strobe lights, they use worldly music. Anything they can do to try to get people in and make them comfortable, but it doesn't solve the problems. Right. Amen. It's a lie. It's false. It's wrong. It won't help them. Amen. There's only one thing that's going to help them. Telling them the truth, amen. And telling them the truth and having those words anointed, amen. Having the Holy Ghost present as you minister to people, amen. Or when you're doing your calling, amen. Let me tell you something. I've heard some of the greatest singers, I mean, we've got technology over internet and television, amen. And you get some people who are millionaires five, six times over and they have a wonderful voice. Wonderful voice. But then all of a sudden you flip over to a Christian radio station to a singer who's spirit filled and they start singing Amazing Grace and all of a sudden the tears start flowing for no reason, amen. It's because of the anointing. The anoint, what the word anointing means is the presence of the Lord. You start sensing something. Something starts pulling at your heart. It's that presence of the Lord. It's the anointing, Amen. That's why we need the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's for service. It's to get the work of God done. Amen. 
You can bring in all the new fads you want, amen, but they ain't going to work, amen. The only thing that works, amen, is the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, amen. The baptism of the Holy Spirit, it's why we need it, it's for service, amen, to get the job done. And not only that, it gives us a power. Go to Acts chapter 1 8, a very familiar verse. It says in Acts 1 8, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and all of Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Now, when it says you shall receive power, amen, talking about miracle working power, so that you shall be witnesses. Now, that word witnesses in the Greek means martyr. It doesn't mean witnessing the souls, but what it really means is a martyr. Amen. What I'm saying is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, amen, that power will be upon you, amen, so that when you want to quit or you want to back down, amen, or when you think, well, this isn't such a good idea, amen, all of a sudden there will be a miracle working power that will quicken you. It will be like a fire shut up in your bones. And when you want to keep quiet, all of a sudden you're going to be saying it out of your mouth before you even can think it. Amen. It will give you a power. A power, amen, to lay self aside, pride aside, amen, so the work of God can get done. A miracle working power, amen. We see that in Jeremiah. Jeremiah was, oh my, he went through 40 years of being thrown down wells and put in the dungeons and everything else, amen. And I'm not going to get into the Old Testament tonight, but for the most part, he had a temporary infilling of the Holy Spirit, amen. Well, why didn't he have a permanent infilling of the Holy Spirit? Because the work of the cross... Amen. What Jesus hasn't been done yet. So, therefore, when his ministry was done, the Holy Spirit had to leave. But thank God in the new covenant we have better promises. Where when you get filled, it stays. Amen. It stays. Amen. But, and, but the case is, Jeremiah, he went through so much. Amen. And he said in the Bible at times, he just wanted to quit and say, Lord, I've done. I've had it. They're not listening. And then all of a sudden, he says, there was a fire shut up in his bones where he would say, I can't quit now. Amen. That's what the baptism of the Holy Spirit does. When you want to shut down, when you want to stop, not fight the good fight of faith anymore, amen, there'll be that fire there, amen, that'll quicken you to keep you going. Amen. That's what it's there for, amen. For power. Amen. To give you a little added boost, amen, a bonus, amen, to help you, amen, in this walk of faith. Amen. Just being filled with the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues is not going to make your problems go away. Amen. But it will quicken you and it will put a fire shut up in your bones so that you'll continue believing. Amen. As you evidence faith in the blood of Jesus so that grace can deliver you out of it. Amen. Does that make sense? Are you understanding that? It, just speaking in tongues and getting filled with the Holy Spirit, say, okay, now all my problems will go away. No, that's not the case, amen. You're going to go through trials and tribulations, amen. But what it will do is when you want to stop believing and shut down, that fire will be there to tell you, just take one more step of faith. Just one more, amen. Keep believing in what my son has done, amen. Keep following me, amen. It's for service. It's for service. Amen. Not only that, the infilling of the Holy Spirit is for a more thorough sanctification process. Amen. In our walk with the Lord. 
And your sanctification process, that starts at the minute of conversion of your born-again experience, amen. The minute you say yes to the Lord, amen, and the Holy Spirit comes in and abodes in you, He starts His sanctification process. And how the sanctification process works is the Holy Spirit brings something to the surface in your heart that's not right, amen. And He asks you to lay it down by faith, amen. And you lay it down, amen. And He takes it out and purges it and puts something else in, amen. And then He takes the next problem up, and then He takes the next problem up, and then He takes the next problem up. Amen. But a lot of the times we want to get in the way and try to help God. Amen. And we cause more confusion and more problems instead of letting him just do it. Amen. And so what the baptism of the Holy Spirit does, it gives us a more thorough sanctification. Amen. Because when you get filled with the Holy Spirit and you start sensing his presence, you stop trusting more and more in self and start trusting more and more in his grace. Amen. Do you understand that? Does that make sense? Amen. As you feel his presence and his anointing, amen, and that grace starts teaching you to rely more on him than yourself, amen. So it gives us a thorough sanctification process. Look at it this way, and I'll give an example for the women and for the men, amen. For you women, think of a sink that's clogged, amen, and has some kind of big old hair clog in there right in the drain. And uh, you turn on the water, amen, now that water is flowing through that drain, amen, but it's not flowing as thorough as it could, amen, because there's that clog there, think of that clog as self, always getting in the way, and then that, amen, that water is that type of grace, amen, that's supposed to be flowing in your life, but that clog is there, it's getting in the way, and grace isn't flowing as thorough, amen, out at the bottom. But then you take the Drano, or whatever it is, the additive, Amen. And dump it in the sink and all of a sudden that additive starts, what is it? Dynamos. Amen. It starts burning and eating away at that clog and all of a sudden it gets that clog out of there so that water can run thoroughly through that pipe. Amen. That's what the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for. It's that additive for in your sanctification process so it can burn out self and flesh so it can get out of the way so grace can flow more thoroughly in your life as you evidence faith in Christ and Him crucified. That's what it's for. Amen. Now I promised you guys an example so I'm going to do the best I can. Amen. Think of a car. Amen. You put gasoline... In the car, amen. Now, that's the power, amen, the power source, the gasoline. Yes, when you get saved, you got the whole Holy Spirit, amen. You get a full tank of gas. But there's just some gunk in the fuel fuel injection that doesn't make that fuel flow as efficiently as it could. So you take, what is it, the STP that you dump in the gasoline? And you think you know so much. But you take that additive and you dump it into the uh, fuel tank. You can see who does the cleaning and who does the driving. Amen. But you take that additive, you dump it in the fuel tank, amen, and it cleans out those fuel injectors so that gasoline can run more thoroughly. Amen. Yes, amen. You may hear some sputtering at the tailpipe. That's just the tongue speaking, amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Some of you are getting it now. Amen. Some of you are getting it. Amen. It's not about the speaking in tongues. That's just the evidence that something good is going in on the inside, getting cleaned up. A thorough sanctification process, a deeper sanctification. That's what the infilling of the Holy Spirit does. It starts burning up the flesh and self so grace can flow more thoroughly. Amen. Amen. If you don't believe me, turn to Matthew, chapter 3, I'm going to give scripture to back it up, verses 10 through 12. Matthew, chapter 3, verses 10 through 12. And it says, Now also the axe is laid onto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which brings not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he, talking about Christ, who comes after me is mightier than I, 
whose shoes I am not worthy to bear, he shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. It's for a thorough purging process, sanctification process, amen, to burn up self, amen, to burn up flesh, amen, so we don't rely in our own strengths and talents and abilities, amen, and continually evidence faith so that grace can flow more thoroughly, amen, amen. cleaning us up, mm-hmm. amen, for a thorough sanctification process, amen, put a little additive, amen, and to your daily walk with the Lord. It's called the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Not only that. His presence. His anointing. When you get filled with the Holy Spirit. Reveals His holiness and righteousness. And we see more and more how ugly our righteousness is. And how vile we really are. And how much cleaning up we really need done. Amen. Does that make sense? For example, because I know people argue with me all the time over the internet. I already got the Holy Ghost. Yes, you already got Him at salvation. Amen. But you're limiting Him to here. And you ain't letting Him do anything else in the rest of the body. Amen. Does that make sense? For example, if I shut off the lights, amen, and left the TV screen on, okay, Now think of the TV screen as the heart of your soul, amen. He's there, the light's there, and it is shining abroad in the building, amen. And you can see things that need to be cleaned up. You have all the electrics there, but not all of it's being utilized. You don't have the lights, you're not using the plugs, you're not, just the TV screen's on, and there is light. Amen. And he is there and the electric's everywhere, but it's not being utilized. But the minute you flip on the lights, you can see a lot more clear. And you can see there's a lot more cleaning up that has to be done. Amen. Hey, you can use a vacuum if you want. Amen. Does that make sense? Amen. Because the Holy Spirit is the one who reveals truth. Amen. And the more you loose of him in your walk, the more he's going to be able to show you, lead you, and guide you, and more things are going to be able to get cleaned up. Amen. Amen. Does that make sense? Just like I said with the electricity, you shut the lights off, doesn't mean the electricity is not there. The bill's already been paid. It's been paid at Calvary. Amen. Electric's there. Amen. Just not utilizing it. You're limiting it to one area. But if you flip on the lights and allow the electricity to flow throughout the whole building, you can see a lot more, amen, in detail what needs cleaned up, what needs done. Amen. That's the reason for the infilling of the Holy Spirit, for more leadings, more guidance, amen. amen. So He's loosed in your life on a greater basis, amen, so He can show you things, teach you things, amen, in a greater degree that you could ever think of before. For a thorough sanctification process. Amen. Praise the Lord. I know it may not be some of the best examples, amen, but you're just going to have to bear with me. You're talking to a blue-collar worker who's never had any uh, Bible seminary or a biblical college. This is the only thing I need with the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's all I need. I don't need man's approval with a... Piece of paper. Amen. No, that's right, brother. We don't need a piece of paper. We got something better. Amen. We've got the teacher. Amen. The Holy Spirit living in us. Amen. Amen. And if you allow him to fill you with the Holy Spirit, whether here on camera, he can do more for you than you could ever dream of. Amen. But just as it was with salvation, it's going to cost you something. At salvation, the old man had to die, had to be crucified with Christ. Amen. Self now has to be crucified. Amen. Self has to be crucified with Christ, buried, and allow the Holy Spirit to have free reign. 
Amen. Does that make sense? Do you understand that? Amen. Self has to get out of the way. Amen. And if you allow him to fill you with the Holy Spirit and power, amen, he'll start burning up self and get it out of the way. Amen. As you evidence faith in Christ and what he's done at the cross, amen. And as grace flows and starts teaching you and as that anointing is there, amen. And as you're denying self, taking up the cross and following him. Amen. We need it for a thorough sanctification. We need it for service. Amen. We need it so it makes us available for the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let me say that again. Makes us available for the nine spiritual gifts of the Spirit. Amen. Do you believe tonight that the gifts are still for today? Amen. Do you still believe that He heals? Amen. Do you still believe He'll give a word of knowledge? Do you still believe, amen, that He'll use people to say, Thus saith the Lord, to prophesy? Do you still believe that He'll give a word of wisdom? Amen. Do you still believe that the gifts of the Spirit are still for today? Amen. Amen. Do you desire to see the gifts of the Spirit as you follow after the love of the truth? Amen. The baptism of the Holy Spirit opens us up so we may be used in the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. Well, Brother Brad, do I really have to be baptized with the Holy Spirit to be used in the gifts? I will say this. There have been some that have been used in gifts of the Spirit that haven't been filled with the Holy Spirit, but it is very, very rare. Amen. Because the pattern we see in the Bible is that they're always filled with the Holy Spirit first. Amen. Amen. While God can do anything, and He can use those that aren't filled with the Holy Spirit, it's on very, very limited, rare occasions. Amen. But the pattern we see in the book of Acts, which is the blueprints of how the church should be operating and running, amen, is that they get filled with the Holy Spirit first, and then you see the gifts of the Spirit operate. Amen. Amen. But it makes us available for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians. 1 Chapter 12. And we'll just start in verse 1. Hallelujah. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 1, it says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles, carried away onto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Spirit. Now there are diversity of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. First of all, when we allow ourselves to be filled with the Holy Spirit by putting self aside and just asking for it, amen, and allow the gifts of the Spirit to operate, everybody profits from it. Everybody spiritually profits from it, amen. Everybody's faith will be built up and edified, amen. If we just allow the Holy Spirit to have His way, amen. If we'll just be filled with the Holy Ghost and allow Him to do what He does best, amen. He's called the Comforter for a reason, amen. Amen. I said He's called the Comforter for a reason, amen. In one way He can comfort and edify and build up people's faith in Christ and Him crucified is by people allowing Him to be filled with them and being used of them and allowing the gifts to operate. And those nine spiritual gifts are the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge, by the same spirit to another faith, by the same spirit to another the gifts of healing, by the same spirit. 
to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another divers kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. The nine gifts of the Spirit. Amen. Where everybody can profit spiritually and be built up in the faith and be edified. Amen. I know there's going to be some on camera saying, well, how can I speak in tongues? Amen. How can I be baptized with the Holy Spirit and be used if the gift of tongues, or be used in uh, spiritual gifts if the tongues is, if the gift of tongues is a gift? Amen. Are you understanding the question? Amen. Because some would say, well, not all speak with tongues. There is a difference between the initial physical evidence as when one gets filled and the gift of tongues. Amen. Amen. You have to understand there's a difference. Well, what's the difference? When one gets filled with the Holy Spirit and one speaks in tongues due to the infilling, that is a supernatural prayer language that the Holy Spirit gives them. Amen. Which every... Spirit-filled believer will receive. They will. Amen. Well, how do you know that, Brother Brad? Because the whole idea of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is to get self aside. And what's the one thing the Bible says that we cannot tame? The tongue. So wouldn't it make sense... In order for us to get all self aside, the tongue has to get tamed. And only God can do that. Amen. And he does that by giving you a supernatural prayer language. The speaking in other tongues. He gives you an utterance. Amen. In your spirit. And by faith, you speak it. I know people say, well, it sounds like babble and this and that. But it is an actual language that was once spoken on this earth. Amen. It is a prayer language. Amen. And we know that. In 1 Corinthians 14, chapter 14, verse 2, it says, For he who speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men, but unto God. For no man understands him, how a bit in the Spirit he speaks mysteries. Amen. We don't know what we're saying, but we do know we're directly communicating with the Lord. And people would say, well, Brother Brad, I have to know. What are they saying? The only glimpse that I can give to you of what they're saying is in Acts 2.11. Amen. In Acts 2.11 it says... The Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Amen. We do know they're speaking unto the Lord, and when they're speaking in tongues, they're speaking the wonderful works of God. Amen. Amen. Because you have to understand, on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost fell, and everyone started, the 120 started speaking in tongues. Amen. And because there was Arabians there, there was uh, Cretes there, and the Crete may have been starting to speak in tongues. Arabian, he didn't understand what he was saying, but he was saying it, and there was Arabian nearby saying, hey, he's speaking my language, and he's speaking the wonderful works of God. Amen. I don't know what we're saying, amen, but I do know it's the wonderful works of God, and it's going directly to the Lord. Amen. Amen. That's all speaking in tongues is. It's a supernatural prayer language. Amen. Does it make you more of a Christian? No. No, there's only one class of Christians. That's blood-bought Christians. Amen. Amen. I'll say that again. There's only one class of Christians. There's not first class and coach. There's only one class. Blood-bought Christians. Amen. But we can have an additive, amen, to help our sanctification process, amen. We can have gifts, amen, so that we may directly communicate with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Just get filled with the Holy Spirit. He'll give you a prayer language. Amen. He'll use you in one of the nine spiritual gifts. Amen. He will. Amen. Amen. And not only that, He'll use you for service. Amen. 
if you'll just allow him to fill you with the Holy Ghost. There's three baptisms that a believer can go through. The first one is the baptism into Christ. That's when you got saved. Amen. The Holy Spirit took you, placed you in the Christ. You was crucified with him. You was buried with him. And you was resurrected with him. Amen. The second baptism is water baptism. Amen. Where the uh, preacher or minister, amen, takes you and dunks you underwater and brings you back up. Amen. And it's an outward expression to the whole world of what's happened on the heart on the inside at salvation. It doesn't add anything to your salvation. All it is is a declaration of faith telling the world, Hey, I'm a Christian. I've been crucified with Christ. I've been buried with Christ. And I've been resurrected with Christ. And then there's a third baptism, which is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, amen. Where at salvation, the Holy Spirit took you and placed you into Christ, amen. Now Christ, turn, and I'll turn it around, Christ takes you and places you into the Holy Spirit so you can have power. Amen. amen. Three baptisms. But let me get back to the tongues question. So every spirit-filled believer, amen. When they get filled with the Holy Spirit, yes, they will speak in tongues. God will give them a prayer language. We see that in Acts 2.4. They all began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. If it's something from the Holy Ghost, why wouldn't you want it? Amen. Amen. I'll say that again. If it's the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, amen, The third part of the Trinity is giving you something. Why wouldn't you want it? Amen. Amen. I can tell you why most people don't want it. Because they don't want the tongue tame. They like the gossip. They like to put people down. Because we like me. (laughs) We like us. We like to lift up self. And so it's hard for... Oh yes, I'm talking about Christians. Amen. Because those are the only ones that can get filled as born again Christians. It's hard to want to put self aside. It's hard to want to put the tongue aside and lay it at the feet of Christ. Amen. But you'll lay it aside. It'll be one of the best decisions you made in your Christian walk. Amen. And let him fill you and get you ready for service. Amen. So you can have a thorough sanctification process. And so you can be used in the nine gifts of the Spirit. Amen. So that people may see that what the Bible says is true. It's not a story. Not just a story. It's true. It happened. It really happened. Amen. He really does what he says he does in here. Amen. Well, how do you know that? What proof can you give? Amen. If you'll just be filled with the Holy Spirit and allow the gifts to operate, He'll show you how real He can really be. Amen. Amen. I can remember, and I believe every believer comes to this in their Christian walk where we say, Lord, you're going to have to do something or I'm just not believing this anymore. Amen. And I know we've all had our trials and valleys. Amen. And I can still remember in... 2010, amen, my wife's had back surgery before and, and the back surgery didn't do it and she was still having spasms in her back and if anybody has back spasms, you know it drops you to the ground and you can't move until the spasm is over. Now don't get me wrong, she still has her days if she goes out into the garden and gets a sore back because of being bent over all day long, but I haven't seen her have back spasms to the way it was prior. Amen. But this one day, and we went to church for three to four years, amen, and every service, every service, we went to the service Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Thursday night, amen. We were the youth pastors at the church, Pentecostal church. And there was times where we had to literally take a chair, and brothers would take her into the chair and bring her up to the altar just to sit her down so we could anoint her with oil and lay hands and pray for her, amen, and nothing. And we did this for years. Lay hands, anoint her, lay hands, do everything the Bible says, nothing, 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 nothing. Amen. And it was the year before we started our ministry here. Amen. And finally it got to the point where the one day she fell on the couch and she couldn't move. She was having a spasm. There was nothing. We've tried doctors. We tried MRI. They couldn't find nothing. We spent tens of thousands of dollars, amen, on hospital bills, MRIs going through CAT scans, screenings, well, we can't find nothing. 
going to services, laying hands, praying, laying hands, praying, anointing with all, everything we could. Three to four years. Amen. If you don't believe me, I'll take you home and show you all the doctor's bills we had that after we paid it off. Amen. But uh, finally it got to the point where she was on the couch and I just I, I didn't say it out loud, but I said it in my spirit and I said it in my heart. I said, Lord, you filled me with the Holy Spirit. You say the gifts of the Spirit are still for today. I need to know, is this true or have I been living a lie? And I wasn't doing it um, sarcastically. And I wasn't doing it out of anger. Amen. I was starting to doubt and I thought, Lord, help my unbelief. I have to see if this is really real. And she was laying on the couch and I just walked over to her. Amen. And I can remember laying my hand on her and taking her hand, and I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, be healed. Amen. And I started to pick her up, and she went, oh, what are you doing? And pfft, smacked me. I said, well, that didn't work. <laughs> yes, yeah, you did. I have the mark to prove it. Amen. But I walked away out of the room, amen, discouraged for about five minutes, and I remember going to the bathroom, and that Holy Ghost fire was there. Amen. And I said, this is it. I'm done. And there was that Holy Ghost fire. Shut up my bones. And said, no, no. Still believe. And I said, okay, I'm going back in there again. And I'm going to do this again. I'm going to tell her in the name of Jesus, be healed and get up. So I turned around and walked into the living room. And she was already up on her feet smiling. And I said, what happened? Amen. And she just saw a smile on her face. She says, the minute you walked out of the room, the Lord said, you're healed. Get up. Amen. And she's never had another back spasm as I've seen like that ever before. Amen. Oh, if she overworks herself, you know, back will be sore just like any of us. But I've never seen a spasm like God healed her. The gifts are still for today. If thou can just believe, all things are possible. Amen. And if you'll test God by faith, you'll be a surprise in what he can do. Amen. Amen. They're still for today. They're still for today if you can just believe, amen. You can believe it or disbelieve it. I don't care, but you can't say nothing about it because you wasn't there, amen. But it's for today, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's why we need it. And guess what? It profited the whole family, amen. It profited the whole family, amen. I can remember uh, Alden uh, five or six years ago, amen, and he's filled with the Holy Spirit, amen. I can remember him being sick the one night, sicker than a dog, amen, and, but he remembered what he was supposed to do, amen. Me and Michelle laid hands on him, all of a sudden he started speaking in tongues and the power of God came upon him, amen, praise the Lord. You'll be surprised what God can do if you'll just yield self, amen, and be filled with the Holy Spirit and allow God to do what he does best, amen. Let the comforter do his job. That, he has that name for a reason, amen, and all we have to do is yield self. Amen. Just how at salvation you said, Lord, save me. Amen. And the Holy Spirit came in and something happened. It's the same process. Just believe in the blood of Jesus. Lift your arms and say, Lord, fill me. I receive the Holy Spirit. The power will come down upon you. Amen. And it will be so strong. There will be an utterance here. And you'll have no choice but want to shout in other tongues and praise Him. Thank you, Lord. Glory. The baptism of the Holy Spirit, not by might nor by power, but by His Spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Even you on camera right now, you can be filled with the Holy Spirit, amen. All you have to do is, just as I said, if you're born again and saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, you are a perfect candidate to be used, amen. Well, Brother Brad, I've got this in my life, and I've got that in my life, and God will never use me. If that was the case, none of us would be used, amen, but he can use you, amen, a willing vessel, amen, if, he'll, if you'll just let him borrow you for a little while and fill you with some oil, amen, he'll use you. I said he'll use you. Just like you did for salvation, amen, right on the computer screen right now. Just lift up your hand and say, I receive the Holy Spirit by faith. Why? Because Christ paid for it, amen. And now just start speaking in tongues and he'll fill you. Yes, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. And for some of you, you may already have been filled. Get refilled, amen. amen. 
<laughs> Stop quenching the spirit and just let it flow out like a river. Amen. Amen. I promise you'll like it. Amen. Taste of it. See if you don't like it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Bible says test the spirit. Amen. Taste of the fruit. See if it's not good. You want to know what your loved ones who have passed on and what the Lord are experiencing right now? Get filled with the Holy Spirit. Sense His presence and you'll get a glimpse of what's going on in heaven. Amen. Amen. I've got grandparents up in heaven. I know what they're doing. How do you know that? I've been filled with the Holy Spirit. I know what His presence is. Amen. And that's only just a taste of it down here. So I can only imagine what it's like up in heaven. Oh, glory, church. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's why we need it. Amen. That's why we need it in our churches. The things of the world's not going to work. Amen. It won't work. I'm sorry. Amen. This is going to be strong and it may be harsh, but it's the truth. Churches can do all the soup kitchens they want. Nothing wrong with that. Amen. They can do all the clothing pantries they want. Nothing wrong with that. Amen. You can do whatever activities you want. Now, if they're self-help books, there is a problem with that. But, but if there's no Holy Ghost there, they're wasting their time. They're wasting their time. Because it's the Holy Spirit who does the drawing. And He draws them through the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Some would ask, well, I know pastors and preachers who aren't filled with the Holy Spirit. And I have literally seen people get saved and changed. That's true. Because if you're God called, the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. So any God-called preacher, now I'm not talking man-called or self-called, but any God-called preacher, there is going to be some degree of anointing on their life, amen, and on their ministry because they're God-called. And God gives them a special anointing, amen, and anointing depends on what calling they, God puts them in, whether it's an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, or teacher. And so, yes, there will be some that are touched and that will be saved. But how many souls and lives aren't being touched and could have been if they would have just yielded themselves to the Holy Ghost. Amen? Does that make sense? Do you understand that? While, yes, there may be a few touched because of the calling on their life, there's thousands upon thousands and hundreds that are missing out on the presence because they're not yielding and letting themselves be filled with the Holy Spirit. And they're going to lose rewards when they stand before Christ. Amen? That's why we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's for service, amen, to get the job done. Amen. And it's the only way it's going to get done, by the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. To thoroughly sanctify us, amen, and to be available for the gifts of the Spirit to confirm what the Word says is true. Amen. Amen. And again, this is the third time I'm trying to get back to this. So, what is the difference between the gift of tongues and your prayer language? The prayer language is something God gives everybody. But there will be a few that God calls for the gift of tongues. And what the gift of tongues is, is when somebody has an utterance or an unction to stand up in the service and they give a tongues for the whole body to hear. Amen. And then somebody will have the gift of interpretation to interpret what that message is to the entire body to hear. Amen. That's the difference between the gift of tongues and the initial physical evidence of speaking in tongues. Amen. And, if there, and the Bible says if there's no interpreter, amen, it says keep silent and let them speak in tongues unto themselves with God. Amen. But every spirit-filled believer will speak in other tongues because God gives them a prayer language. And there will be a few called to have the gift of tongues where they'll give a message to the entire body which is to be interpreted. Amen. The same idea with healing. The Bible says every elder, every preacher is to anoint them with oil and lay and pray for the sick. 
the Bible says that every spirit-filled believer is to lay hands on the sick and believe they shall recover, get better. But there will only be a few called that have the gift of healings, which is something completely different, where they'll be able to say, in the name of Jesus, get up, and they're up. Amen? Just as there's a difference between laying hands on the sick and they will get better, amen, and somebody having the gift of healings where they just get up. Same thing with the gift of the speaking in tongues. One's the initial physical evidence, your prayer language, and there'll be some who are called to give an utterance to the whole body. Amen. To be interpreted. Amen. Would you stand? No, that's okay. The baptism of the Holy Spirit and why we need it in our churches today. Amen. If you have not been filled with the Holy Spirit yet, or if you need a refilling, amen, I'm going to give an altar call. And those who may be on camera who are not here, amen, don't click off the uh, computer yet. If you have not been filled with the Holy Spirit, I want to give you the opportunity, amen, to be filled right now. And just as I said with salvation this morning, it's a free gift. The greatest gift to the sinner is salvation, and the greatest gift to the believer is is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And all you have to do, it works the same way how you got saved. Believe that Jesus paid the price at Calvary for you to have it. And just ask Him. And He'll give it to you. Amen. And right now you may be sensing the Holy Spirit. Amen. And you may even feel an unction in your spirit. And you should. And that's right. Now, speak it out by faith. Amen. If you hold back, it's never going to happen. He's not going to force you to do it. He didn't force you to get saved. He's not going to force you to get filled. Amen. You may say, well, Brother Brad, I'm the one doing the speaking. I know that we're the one, you're the one that we're trying to get filled. Amen. (laughs) Praise the Lord. So I want you right now, here and on camera, amen, start speaking what you sense, amen, in your spirit. Doesn't matter what it sounds like, you won't know. So you might as well get that out of your mind. And just start praying and worship him in, in the tongues. Amen. Yaloba shanda da ba shiti ayata ba shanda ha. Yanda ga shiti ayata shanda lolo ba shindi ayata ba shanda. Amen. Just start praising him and worship him. Amen. Don't speak in a, a language you know. He's given you an unction. That's what, this is where the faith comes in. Amen. Speak it by faith, amen, and he will fill you. All you got to do is ask him and say, Lord, I receive the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just let him fill you. Yield that tongue. Lay it aside at the feet of Jesus Christ. Amen. He won't force you to do it. Amen. But by uh, faith, if you'll lay it down, he'll give you the grace. Amen. To speak it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise him, church. You'll, those who are spirit filled, uh, church, just go ahead and start praising and worship him in spirit and truth. It may only be a word, a sentence, or a phrase. Amen. But he'll build on to that. Amen. If you'll just step out in faith. Praise the Lord. Roll a la bashanda, la la bashindi, ayadana bashanda, hayabora, la bashanda, hala bashanda. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Fill them here, Lord. Fill them on camera, Lord. Fill them any single person, Lord, who may click on this archive later, Lord, and let them, the initial physical evidence come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Roll the bashanda da bashiti ayoro da bashanda ha. Ana bashanda la bashiti ta da bashanda. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Roll the bashanda da basha. Just praise Him, church. Amen. Just worship Him in spirit and truth. Amen. The Bible says it'll happen. Amen. The Spirit will give you the utterance. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
You by camera, just speak what you sense right now. And he'll fill you with the Holy Spirit. And he'll use you in ways you never thought before. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Glory. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's just give the Lord a hand clap of praise, amen, before we dismiss. Praise the Lord. If you by camera, amen, sense the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, and by faith you spoke that utterance that you sensed in your spirit, you just got filled and baptized with the Holy Spirit, amen. And the Holy Spirit's going to start using you and doing a thorough sanctification process in your walk, amen. And He's going to start teaching you the deep things, yea, the deep things of God, amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. And Father, I thank you for those, uh, Lord, who you fill with the Holy Spirit or refill, Lord, or put that hunger in them, Lord, so that they may want to be filled, Lord. And Father, we just ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, that every single person, Lord, that heard this message, Lord, let it touch their hearts and lives and let it get them hungry and thirsty for the righteousness of you, Lord, and let them be filled with your spirit, with power, Lord, and let the initial physical evidence of tongues uh, manifest itself. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless all of you. And